Hi, David Ellenstein here, Artistic Director of North Coast Repertory Theater. Thank you for tuning in today to our theater conversations. If you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. That would help us out a lot. Thank you. It is my pleasure today to be joined by Teresa Eyring, who is the CEO and Executive Director of Theater Communications Group, TCG, which is an organization that North Coast Repertory Theater belongs to, as do most of the theaters in the United States. So, hello, Teresa, how are you? Hi, David. I'm well, thank you. It's, all it's, things considered. All things considered, we're all kind of locked in our houses, but uh, we're doing these and these are fun. So we're, I'm so glad you're doing this with us. I really appreciate that you invited me to speak with you today. Well, I think this is something that my audience would be interested in knowing about, you know, because uh, the profession knows all about it. The industry knows all about TCG. TCG is what TCG is to us, but most people who go to the theater don't know. So maybe I thought we could start the conversation by you maybe just giving us a, a quick overview of what TCG actually is. Sure, TCG is the National Organization for Theater, and our constituency is primarily resident not-for-profit theater companies, like North Coast Rep, like Old Globe, like Center Theater Group, uh, naming a few that are kind of in your general geography. Um, and we were founded back in 1961 as a way to create communications channels between theaters that were outside of New York. And, you know, back in those days, theater was almost entirely centered in New York and was, on, was entirely commercial. Even, even small off-Broadway companies were operating not as nonprofits, but technically as commercial entities. And there were some artistic leaders at the time, directors, people like Zelda Fitchhandler, Nina Vance, who was actually founded The Alley before the 60s, but who really wanted to create theater outside the commercial pressures of New York. So we had the beginnings of a resident theater movement and TCG came along to help all of those leaders stay in communication, learn from each other, and in some cases even visit each other. So that was the very essence. And to be honest, um, we sometimes say we were a social network before social networking even existed. Um, that essence is still with TCG. It's an organization. We have over 500 member theaters all across the US, including New York. Um, and we, we try to make sure that theater leaders are able to, and their staffs and artists are able to be in communication with each other uh, in order to collaborate and learn from each other. And, but since we were founded, we've also added a number of other amazing programs. We're, we're the largest independent trade publisher of dramatic literature in North America. So that's Plays. It's a magazine called American Theater. Um, we also have a grant making function. We're able to partner with foundations and corporations sometimes and individuals to uh, design grant programs and then partner with them to make those grants into the theater field. We are also very active in the federal advocacy realm. We were one of the co-founders of the Performing Arts Alliance. We've been very busy lately, as you can imagine. Um, so in a nutshell, that's, that's TCG. I think we've really been a connecting point for theater makers for all of these decades. And, and one of the, the most amazing things to me is because uh, TCG has a national conference every year and usually there's a, close to a thousand people, give or take a few hundred, depending on the year that attend. But the, the scope and differences between the kinds of theaters and the sizes of theaters and the missions of theaters is so vast. I mean, it's how does how does TCG deal with um, being the one organization that deals with a theater that puts things together on a shoestring or a giant theater that puts on a season of 12 plays with giant casts and um, you know many, many million of dollars budget. Is that one of the challenges? It is a challenge. We're versatile and yeah. we, know a lot, we know a lot about all those sizes and scales of theater making and producing. 
And I think it's, we're, we're, we're very good listeners. And one of the ways that we work is we try to create, uh, for lack of a better word, affinity spaces for theaters and theater makers that um, in some cases have to do with size or it might have to do with the role that someone plays within an organization. We have a whole, with our conferences, we have a whole artistic directors gathering that we do every year. Um, sometimes it's just, we also uh, convene education directors fairly regularly. So it's by giving people the opportunity to come together around some of the commonalities, but then also encourage people to recognize the power of the whole and the whole in its diversity, whether it's size, whether it's mission, um, you know, any of those factors, because people will learn from each other. It may be even in, you know, especially in these times, size is important because if your theater employs 300 people, uh, you know, some of your challenges are different from if your theater employs two people. Um, but when you're talking about artistry and, for example, coming up with creative ways of engaging an audience or a community, that, you know, that transverses all of the things that you might consider um, the differences among theaters. Everybody's interested in that. Everybody's interested in being creative around the art and the community connection. So. Right. Right. So I know that before you came to TCG, you were the managing director at the Minneapolis Children's Theater, which is a huge organization. And before that, you were the, I believe the, get, correct me if I'm wrong, the associate managing director at the Guthrie Theater, which is one of the um, major theaters in our country. So what got you into theater? How did you end up um, going into management of theater and then running TCG? But what was your, your spark as a young person that got you excited about doing theater and spending your life promoting theater? You know, my, my, my spark is, was similar to so many of us who have a passion for this art form. I was introduced to the arts by my parents. They were, they believed in the value of arts and culture. So we, we, I had five brothers and sisters. I still do have five brothers and sisters. Um, and we just, we went to many different arts events, whether it was classical music or, um, or even just a little circus thing that was being done, you know, down the block. We did all kinds of, of arts and we go to museums. But the thing that really got me was when I was 10 years old, my parents brought me to New York which is where TCG is based and where I am right now. It's where I live. Um, and they took me to two Broadway shows. Which ones? Promises, Promises mm -hmm. and Butterflies Are Free. Okay. And I just loved it. Uh, and, but the thing is, I didn't ever want to be the person who was on stage. I was curious about who was the person who got everybody there, who got the actors there, who got the audience there. So I knew, I didn't know there was such a thing as a producer or an arts administrator, but I kind of knew that whoever did that thing is what I wanted to do someday. I also um, became very interested in art history and started to recognize the connection between the artistry of a particular period and what was happening during that time. You know politically, socially. And so that was intriguing to me. And I decided, I think the arts really need to be central in community life always. And so when I graduated from college, I discovered there is such a thing as arts administration. And from there, I just started off at the Woolly Mammoth Theater Company in Washington, DC. The, right. office, that one. the right. offices were in the choir loft of a church. I mean, it was tiny. Um, but I loved the work and I was a fundraiser for them. And one thing led to another. I went to grad school at Yale, um, got my master's in theater administration, and then, you know, went to the Guthrie and then to the Wilma and then back to the Twin Cities for the Children's Theater Company. And uh, I haven't regretted a single second of it. So, so you, but now you've been at TCG for 13 years. 
Yes. How is how is that different from like being a managing director at a theater now running a theater service organization essentially? Can you talk about the difference and is is it what the difference in the creative process for you? It's very different because in a theater we're all working together to create productions, education programs, and connectivity with a particular community. And it's, it's very local. Even theaters, even theaters that aspire to tour or have a show move to Broadway or what have you, it's very local. Um, and TCG, first of all, the only thing we do, we have a couple of events that the entire staff works on in one way or the other. You mentioned one, it's the national conference. We also have a fall forum on governance for trustees, which is also a really great event here in New York. And um, so, so there isn't that same rhythm of knowing that you're gonna have a production and then you're gonna have the next production and everybody's gonna work together to get to opening night, whether they're you know, in rehearsal or building sets or coming up with a marketing plan. You know, we're not, our, our constituents, our community, some are here in New York, right outside our door, but a lot, everybody else is around the country. So, um, so, so it's really different in that sense, the rhythm of it. And the other thing is that, and the national nature of it, and sometimes even global nature of it, but it's also um, a way of thinking too, because at TCG, I realized after, I had been there for two or three years, you just build so many relationships all over the place. And you start to see trends at a higher level of what's happening uh, economically or in terms of the kind of work that's being made or what playwrights are interested in. And it just is, it's just a whole, it's a different knowledge base and relationship base and way of thinking and working. So I sometimes I miss being in the theater you yeah, because it's sometimes you probably miss it and sometimes you're probably glad you're not. <laughs> well, you know that every night when the phone rings at eight o'clock, you say to your seven o'clock, you say, all right, I hope nothing's going wrong at the theater. Right. I don't have I don't have that same. You know, somebody calling and saying the power went out or, you know, right. the understudy has to go on or. Right. Those things, but. So 13 years at TCG now as executive director, you've been there 13 years. What are the one or two like major accomplishments that you've had there that you're most proud of that have made a difference you feel in the field? I would say um, one of them is just recognizing that our theater field over the decades uh, it, it never became as inclusive, you know, we, we, as, as it could be in terms of ensuring that often, oftentimes um, communities that have traditionally been marginalized have the same opportunities to access resources and to have their work seen and, and lifted up. And so one of the things that has happened on my watch is TCG is committed forcefully to principles around equity, diversity, and inclusion. And I think we've really led the art sector in that work. So I'm very proud of it. I, I think we're seeing a, a lot of transition right now in terms of succession in the theaters, artistic and managing directors who are retiring or moving on to do something besides run an institution. And a lot of the people who are coming into those positions are people of color, women, um, more so than in the past. Um, so I think, I think there's a sense of, it's almost like our new movement is now we have this beautiful theater community that's really well developed. Um, and now, and that, and that came about through a sense of the theaters being part of a movement. Our new movement is how do we create the most creative and inclusive field that we can and also a second thing is I, that I'm proud of is creating a sense that TCG exists to make a better world for theaters. You know, we're trying to help theaters be stronger um, and, and more nimble and, and more artistically brilliant. But we also believe 
that there should be that theater should create a better world as well. Yeah. So we have a saying that goes a better world for theater, a better world because of theater. And I think having that creating that sensibility is something that I'm I'm really proud of. So jumping off on, on that a little bit, um, you talked about the 10 year old girl who saw the two Broadway plays and got turned on by theater for the rest of her life. Right. Uh, it's great. But what experiences have you had or have you witnessed where you went, this really is making the world a better place? Maybe if something comes to your mind, a production, an experience, um, something that's happened to you where you went, this is why I do it. Yeah, well, I'll give you a very local example. Yeah. Um, I live in Upper Manhattan and uh, one of our theaters, uh, one of our TCG member theaters here is the Classical Theater of Harlem. Uh, there's also the National Black Theater uh, and Harlem Stage and, and lots and lots of arts activity in Upper Manhattan and in Harlem. And when I see the Classical Theater of Harlem's work in Marcus Garvey Park, there is a, an outdoor stage that's called the, uh, the Richard Rogers Amphitheater. And it's really remarkable. They perform Shakespeare for free and it's unticketed as well. You just go. And when you see the variety of folks who show up, everybody comes. And it's, I, I think to myself, this is community impact. People are coming, they're loving theater. It's drawing people to the area. It's, you know, helping restaurants. You know, I say all of this in the context of the world we're in right now with COVID-19 where everything is closed, but. Right. <laughs> we, we, that's why we're doing these though. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. When we when we come back, when we come back, so much joy in that. So that's a very local example, um, where I just I see how theater brings people together, and it brings people together who might not have come together naturally. Um, so so that impact is so important. Then you see how it it really affects the vitality of an entire community. Um, I also, oh my gosh, so many examples of that. I mean, you mentioned Broadway shows initially are what, you know, New York, being in New York, going to Broadway shows are what really got my attention as a young person. But I also went to theater in resident companies like Center Stage. Okay. Um, and I've seen so many, and, and so, so it's the resident theater companies that I'm most passionate about because I also see how many young people have their lives changed just as I did. Not that they necessarily then want to go into theater. Um, they might go on to become doctors and lawyers and teachers and, you know, servers and flight attendants and all, all other things. But you see how the ability for, for a young person to be able, and for older people too, to be able to access their creativity is, um, it's, it's really life-changing. And it also levels, I sometimes say it levels the playing field in terms of where, what, what your background is, what resources you had growing up, what access to education you had. If you are able to attend a play or even perform or have access to um, expressing yourself in some way, I think it, it, it creates it's a, it creates a leveling effect in our entire community and country. Right. Well, like so many of the um, of the theaters in the country, a lot of my audience is elderly, and mm. um, I feel like it's a touchstone for so many. A lot of them are people who enjoyed the theater when they were younger, and they continue to enjoy the theater. And it's mm. a touchstone back to the vitality of being alive and being a human being, which is what. Why I value it so much is that, you know, it lifts people uh, out, outside of their everyday life so they can look at life in a more uh, open way and, and feel good about being a human being and the aspirations that we have. Um, can you talk a little bit about, again, going to the fact that, that the audience, a lot of it in any case, it, is aging and um, the baby boomers certainly were raised with going to theater. But I'm not so sure that the uh, generations that followed were raised quite the same way. And I sometimes have a concern that in 20 years, I think we're good for 20 years, but in 20 years, 
because the young people are not getting the arts education that I got when I went to school. I mean, we went to the theater, we went to the ballet, we went to the opera through school too. And those programs don't really exist anymore. Um, can you speak to us, is there TCG uh, programs or do you have any thoughts personally about how we're gonna keep the young people engaged and in, in coming to the theater as they get older and have the time and the disposable income to spend at the theater that they will? A tough question. I, I think. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Well, there has been honestly, TCG. One of the things we do is research, and for 40 years or something like that, we've been conducting fiscal research uh, and also audience research just to understand what the trends are. And the truth is that there is, over time, there has been an average gradual decline. Now I say average because, and not to get too technical, but because there's some theaters that see an increase over time or see an increase over a number of years and then a little decrease and then an increase. So it's not, it, it's really just an average gradual decline. Um, and so that's, that's a concern. It's usually affected by recessions also. So when there's an economic downturn, there tends to be a downturn in attendance. Um, when you add to that a pandemic. Uh, That'll do it. Yeah. So just in general, part, why is that? We don't know exactly, but I think in part, it's just that there are, especially now with so much high quality content that is available on demand, live stream. Um, and because also there are a lot of playwrights writing that material, by the way. <laughs> I just think there's, there's more competition for people's time and more content available that people are wanting to access. So there's, there's limitations on, on, on how often they can attend theater, for example. Right. When it comes to the younger folks, I don't know, I, I think that when I go to a theater for young audiences, since I worked in one for a long time and because I also go to the New Victory here in New York uh, a few times a year, I see young people leaning into theater, loving the live experience. Um, so I think it's important to continue to make, we've never had enough theater for young audiences in this country, in my opinion, um, but to make opportunities for young people to attend theater possible, just so they know it, but also to recognize that the way they may want to experience theater is different from the way you mentioned baby boomers, or you know, other generations might enjoy attending theater in, in different ways than younger people do. Um, there's a lot more immersive theater that's taking place. Um, I think topics that are being explored are, are, and some of the younger playwrights are exploring topics that are of interest to their peers. So, I have, I, I'm not expecting that there will be no theater in 20 years, but I do think it's challenging. We just need to keep watching it. We need to make sure that we're engaging. Sometimes it's a one-on-one -on -one engagement. Right. It's not mass marketing to a particular demographic. Um, and there's lots of creative ways that all kinds of performing arts organizations are utilizing social media to do that, whether it's Instagram or Twitter or Facebook. Yeah. So. Well, for me, you know, I, I, I like watching a quality film or, or television program, but it's not the same as experiencing something live. I'm the same way with music. I'd rather, you know, go and hear it live because it's the now and it's in the moment. And I thank you and I thank TCG for, you know, being the organization that we all who create the live stuff can lean on and for, you know, information or trends or uh, even the, the social aspect of it. So. It's great to talk to you today, and I'm so glad you, you, you agreed to do this, and my, I think my audience will really enjoy what you had to say. Oh, thank you so much, David. Yeah. I hope to see you in person. I know, so hopefully that'll happen soon. We gotta hope, it seems like maybe we're just turning the corner, the beginning to turn the corner. We're gonna hope that that's the case, and, and we'll all be back and able to see each other really soon. Yes, thank so, you. Thanks Bye. for today, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.